Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Horror of the Orient Express. This is the Kickstarter preview. The Kickstarter is still live at the time of me recording this. I think it's got about 20 hours to go, so it's got almost got one more day, and then it's gone. I mean, like all Kickstarters, it'll probably be a late pledge that you can jump into, but it's always a little bit more expensive to do late pledges. So uh, if you're interested, now's the time to jump on. But uh, a guy started commenting on my videos. I love it when people do this and gave me some rules error advice where I've been doing some things a little bit wrong. So let's, uh, let's have a look at his changes and see if we can implement as many as we can. Because I wanted to try and finish the game before the Kickstarter ended. So I started to, last turn, I did two turns in a row and I doomed them really quickly and I made quite a few horrible errors. One of the big errors is that I completely forgot to do an entire event phase. So <laughs> I didn't do the event phase for Lucy over here, which is a huge error. And I can't get back to that because I've done all the other event phases. So we'll just keep going. But there are a couple of big errors. One is when you do the vampire board, like, see, when the vampire board triggered, this guy here went off, right? That's the face that got attacked. So I took the token from that spot. But no matter what happens, you always take the token from the far left. So it's actually this one that comes off, which means that the vampire levels up a little bit slower into the really nasty stuff. So that's actually a little bit better for me, that error. The other error is even though the vampire, the vampire was in this cart, right? And then he moved and he moved to this cart and there's no one in there. But that can't happen. So basically what happens is if he can't, if he can't move into a place that has a tile, right? He just moves to the next one along in that direction. But of course he can't move that direction because the train is here. So he actually ends up in this cart. So that was a big error. Another error was that this skill here put all your, uh, where is it? This skill here, choose an investigator and place one cube next to their skill. It has the specification next to their skill, which means at the end of the turn, I had two cubes down here and I thought, oh, you know what? I'll just stick him here. And that way when he rests, he gets an extra Beveron. But no, I can't do that because there's no skill in those slots which means she ends the turn with two extra basic actions that I have not used. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now, the other thing is basically the conversation draws. Like the way the rules state is that if you have a talk four and you draw four tokens, right? Not a bad draw. Every token that is a split token, one of these bad ones, you actually shuffle back in before you start doing the push your luck phase of the conversation. Now, I don't know what I think about this. I'm not, it seems to me that this is a weird rule that just adds extra time. Because the way, I mean, I've actually made a post on this in the variant section on Board Game Geek for this game. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But my thinking is that these, these tokens, they're not like dice. They're always the same token, right? So there's 28 tokens in this bag, which means you've got a X of 28 chance of drawing any one token, like a one of 28 chance, okay? So if I draw four tokens and I put this one back in, right? And I draw another token, I've still only drawn four out of 28. It's the same odds. I mean, technically it's like a re-roll of a die, but I don't know. And even if you reset the odds, so say, say, uh, say I draw, yeah, okay. Say I draw this one, right? Well, that's, that's a bad example. Say, say, say I draw like this. Okay. And then I go, okay, boom. And then you reset the odds. It's now X of 27 is going to be the odds, right? But the thing is, the ratio of good tiles to bad tiles is actually now in favor of the bad tiles. So there are more bad tiles than there was in the previous odds. So it's actually more likely to draw a bad tile. But that's offset, of course, because you've already got the good tiles out from the initial draw, 
which basically brings it back to the same odds. It's almost identical. I mean, it's not exactly the same. And yes, it's a bit of a re-roll, but it feels to me like this is just a big waste of time. Now it's all right in the mod because the mod's so quick, you just drop them in and it just, you know, shuffles it for you and everything. But in a real life game, you've probably dealt them to the table. You know, you've got to pick them up off the table. You've got to put them in the bag. You've got to sh shake the bag, draw them back out. You're probably talking to your mates. It's going to add time to the game unnecessarily, it seems to me. I'm not sure what I think about this. The, the only real, this actually happened in my last turn, is if in the initial draw, you draw a fail like this, okay, you basically still get to put them back in and do the pressure luck phase. And it feels to me like this is the reason why this rule exists. But again, drawing drawing a fail in your opening hand is seems like it might be a rare occurrence or drawing all fails or something. And I think in just those two cases, you just do the reshuffle. And then most of the time you play, you'll never have to reshuffle because I've been really enjoying the push your luck aspect of the conversation bag. I think it's a really fun aspect of the game. And I haven't been doing that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking about here. It feels weird to me. I don't, I'm not sure. It just feels like an unnecessary complication to the talk rules. Whatevs, man. Let's get into this. Firstly, we've got two actions here that I'm going to redo. So, she's in the sanctuary. So I think she's going to go one move to here and just open this curtain because of the uh, the guy in there. Remember, if the window is open, the howler will kill a panicking or wounded character, and there is a a, a panicking character in there. So we want to get rid of that. Do you know what I might do? Because there's no there's no vampire tokens out, so it's not going to pop for a while. I actually might. She starts in here, right? I might use the sanctuary to pull the panicking person in here, and then I'll move out here. And that's my two actions. Okay, let's get into the actual turn here. Firstly, we have two actions here. She is gonna move in here. That's one action. And then we're gonna do this thing here. Send a passenger or a suspect to a chosen carriage. You may spend two energy to send another suspect or passenger to the same cart. So what I think I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna send the medium to here along with one of these panicking characters. And then I'm gonna use the sanctuary ability to move this one into here like so. So that is one, two, three. Because we did the extra two energy plus the one and we've done. Nice. Let's come down here and draw from the setup bag and we get a face tile. Only seven in the bag now. And the train moves one. Now this guy's turn. So what have we got here? So he's going to do Bounty Hunt. Push one for all monsters of a chosen color in your cart. For each monster that falls behind, remove one monster from the portal of its color. Now, there is, unfortunately, no red essences, but we are going to do it, and we're going to move two behind. Just make sure that's the best one to do. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to do this one. Push zero, but we may spend up to five for each energy spent, push another monster. So we're just going to go one, two, three, and just put all those guys off. And then I'm going to go one, and I can't do a banish. Okay, let's draw the next one. Blamo, it's another vampire. And the train moves. Trying to remember to do that every time now. Now this guy is going to do a rest. So there's three chevrons. And he's at zero.
Okay, so what does he want to do? I think we're going to upgrade help from Papa. And I think I'm going to... This one's really good. Gain favors. I think I might just go talk five. Get a high level talk in action. And now we've got two actions. Where is he here? Oh, we've got slide boots. So what he's going to do, he's going to go interact. And he's going to resolve this story because we know that he's not a cultist. So that's all good for us. So let's just search here. What is it? There it is. I can't, I can't even read this writing. What's that say? Inwitting? Inviting? Okay, I'm, just, I'm going to say translate this into speech for someone who doesn't really understand English. You open a series of Russian nesting dolls, each revealing a smaller companion doll inside it. This seemingly endless procession is both inspiring and intriguing. Choose an option. Keep opening the weird dolls. Read 107. Cherish the moment of contemplation and give the toy back to the owner. Well... This is called a Cthulhu, right? Because curiosity killed the cat in this game big time. So I'm going to go eight, give it back to him. So then we come up to the scripting thing here. And we've got a, there we are, script eight, wasn't it? Yep. And let's read that. Folk ornaments on the doll remind you of your childhood. Everything was simpler and easy to understand. Remove one essence from the rightmost portal. Okay, that's this one here. And now he's got one more action. So I think he's going to go one, two. Uh, yeah, he's going to go one, two here. Okay, let's draw a token. Ooh, it is the activation of the portal. This is not good. So... Oh, this is another thing. Basically, the, incant the incantation is supposed to be always visible, so you can kind of plan for it. Anyway, the point is we have two tokens and we have one, two, insane. So we have a power of four. Now, remember, it's activate a monster and then it's sort of like a second box. Activate another monster for every two ritual power points. So that's activate one, and we have another two monsters to activate. So activate three monsters. There's only two monsters on the board, though. So this one is the window is open. It is not open. So he just moves up here and sends someone panicking. So we've got to send this person panicking. This person moves here and send person panicking. Okay, and then the train moves, bonk. And finally, we have this person's turn. So you're gonna open this window and then move here. That's one, two, and she's gonna use this ability. In a cart with a closed window, all panicking, angry, or calm passages turn happy. So that is. Where's the happy face? Happy, happy, happy. And then for the gather, she's also going to do dather and just get this out. Oh, actually, we don't even need to get rid of that, right? Yes, we do. And just get this out of there completely. That way that one's free from the vampire. And that's the end of her turn. So she did a move, a move and an activation. Let's draw. It's a train token. One. Draw. It's a train token. One. Draw. It's another one of these oh god so we've done this one forgot to uh reveal the next one again 
Each non-raving investigator loses one sanity. Each investigator loses another one sanity for every two ritual power points. So that is three sanity each get lost. One, two, three. One, two, three. So each, what up? Yeah, each investigator. Ooh, one. Okay, what happens now? I think that just comes off, right? Two, three. One, two, three. I have to look up exactly what that means. Does that mean he turns raving? And he's only got one sanity left. Because this was raving symbol turned up. I'm not quite sure how that works. Whatever. The point is that is done. And then a panicking guy turns insane. There is a panicking guy here. And we have another insane person. And bam, we move another spot on the track. Okay. So that is the end of that turn. And I think... I'll see you guys next time.